Hello and welcome to another podcast of Dental Practice Sales, um, where we aim to cover all things dental. Over the coming months we'll be bringing in some special guests um, to discuss, take the myth out of selling a dental practice. My name's Alex Barrett, I'm Director of Dental Practice Sales and I'm joined today by Matthew Taylor, who is also a Director of uh, Dental Practice Sales. How are you Matthew? Uh, thanks, I'm great, great to be here. <laughs> good, good, thanks for joining us. No, we'll, we'll, we'll just jump in with, um, with the first question and you're more than welcome to send questions, questions via Twitter. Uh, just refer to the uh, details at the bottom of the screen. Now, Matthew, ha how's the market been going so far? Well, I have to say it's quite hotly contested, so uh, certainly good news if you're looking to sell either now or in the, in the immediate term, mm -hmm. because uh, what we're seeing is a lot of corporate activity. Yes. Um, we're seeing a lot of consolidation of smaller practices into large super, super practices, let's call it. Um, but also there is a lot of individual buyers looking to buy just small two, three chair practices. Mm -hmm. So as, as Matt said, there's a lot of activity at the moment. I've got a few questions coming on email, Matt. Um, the first one, when is the right time to sell a dental practice? Yeah, it's one of those questions, how long is a bit of a piece of string, I suppose. Uh, but what I would say is, rather than say whether now is the perfect time or is it next year or the year after, I think it's more important to be the right time for the vendor. And what we find is by a vendor setting their succession plan up and allaying that uh, understanding of what they're looking to do with the right buyer, then it can be a great time now, it could be a great time in two or three years. Some people like the idea of having an exit strategy that sees them leave the practice in three to five years. Other people would really only want to be doing a six month handover. So whether it's the right time to sell in the market right now, I think it's a great time. However, should someone sell right now really depends on their particular situation. Mm. Very, very, very true, very true. So I guess leading on from that, when would be a good time to speak to a, a specialist broker? I think there's a couple of different ways that um, someone like yourself or, or myself can help someone. Whether they're selling right now, obviously, great, give us a call, we can talk about our strategy and our approach and, and what the practice might be worth. However, even speaking a year, two years out, often we can give pieces of advice to put certain things in place, whether it be employee agreements they've never had before, um, HR compliances, um, even just a bit of a facelift to the practice, the types of things that they could do that would really maximise the value in the future. Mm -hmm. So long story short, it could be a year, it could be two years, even five years, we're really happy to have those initial discussions with people. For sure, for sure. And that's a good point that Matt makes. We're always open to speaking to people, even if you're not selling right away. There's never a good time, never a, sorry, never a bad time to speak to an industry specialist broker. Um, we can certainly guide you through the process. And even if that's in two to three years' time, happy to open up discussions because it can be a long and tiring process. Now we've got a couple of questions come in, Matt, um, just on the email there. Just referring to what you just asked. Just got one from John Reynolds in um, Barwon Heads. What, why choose an industry specialist? Yeah, good question. Um, what I find, and I've had about seven years now experience in business broking and another 15 in, in funding of practices, and there's a whole array of important things that, that a broker will need to understand that I really think that is quite difficult to someone new to an industry, even though they might have the right licensing requirements to sell a business, understanding the terminology. Every industry has a different valuation model and evaluation multiple, whether it be a percentage of turnover or a multiple of turnover, whether it be a multiple of the EBIT or the underlying profit before interest and tax. Understanding what's happened in the past historically, which, which corporate's just purchased, which corporate hasn't purchased, which corporate needs a particular practice in a particular area. So the understanding of the buyers is critical. The understanding of the vendors and what their businesses uh, look like and how they operate can be really important. So the, the advantage of having that industry specialisation really is, is being across a lot of the uh, important types of things to that industry, whether that be a, a government legislation or regulatory issue, mm -hmm. um, or whether it just be a pure valuation model. Having a specialist broker is someone who's going to understand straight away your practice, have a deep knowledge of the potential value, and how best to take that to the market as well. Yeah, it, for sure. For sure. Now, I know Matt works on his three C's principle. Matt, tell us your, tell us your three C's. 
If you can remember. Oh, well, there's only three. <laughs> I love putting people on the spot. Yeah, I know. And it's funny, I just uh, saw a, a fantastic clip which, which we called the five C's, which um, That's right. I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't come up with five. <laughs> but the first one's character. Um, I think coming across a... We all talk about uh, dentists and, and also other medical professionals talk about bedside manner. And, and, and it's so critical in that dental industry to be successful is to have... Um, that warm and comfortable feeling with your dentist. Now, everyone's different, every personality is different, but what we find if the vendor feels comfortable with that purchaser, so having that initial needing and, and feels that character that, listen, I can imagine you looking after my patients, is a good chance and every possible chance that that would be a good fit for your practice. Mm -hmm. So that first step's that character. You want me to go to the second one? If I can remember. The floor is yours. The next one really is capacity. Um, they've got to be able to afford the business. So it's all great bloke, mm -hmm. get on well, but can he afford it? And that's where my finance background's really helped as for with sure. some of the, the cases that sure. we've been involved with jointly is being able to really assess someone's financial situation, have a look at the value of the practice, understanding the funding models that the bank will provide, and then being over, able to overlay that in, what's the likelihood of this, being, this guy buying this business? Most of our candidates, before they try and buy a business, they've already spoken to their banks, they're pretty well, um, have a pretty good grip on their own financial situation. But for me to be able to overlay that, we're not wasting time with someone who wants to buy a million dollar practice whose capacity is 500,000, or someone trying to buy a six million dollar practice who could only buy a two million dollar practice. And, and the, the third one there really is capability. And well that's it, isn't it? if they're yeah. not capable of actually purchasing it, then there's no point going through the story, even starting the process. Well, I was probably more talking about capability really as on the individual skill sets and knowledge. Okay. So um, what I mean by the capability is uh, the capacity is the purchase, but the capability is can they do the work. Mm -hmm. So as we've come across, there's a lot of different types of dental practices, yeah, there's a lot of specialisation. So if someone has a particular uh, referral network or concentrates on a particular type of dental work, we want to make sure whoever the incumbent new dentist is going to be, um, that they've got that skill set. Or, if it's a corporate and that particular vendor is staying within the business, that he has the skills and knowledge to, over time, pass that over. So, and so you have to feel comfortable that corporate's going to provide you the right type of person to come in, that you can sure. hand that business over. So, sure. that, that capability, and that, that's some simple questions mm -hmm. that the buyer can, uh, sorry, the vendor can ask the buyer. What's their experience? What kind of work they enjoy doing? and really making sure you're overlaying. So, in summary, it's about getting those three factors, that the character of the person, their skill set and their capability, and their capacity to be able to actually afford the business. Mm -hmm. Great, that's great, Matt. Look, th thanks very much. That's about all we've got time for today. Um, you're more than welcome to send us emails uh, with your questions or comments to alex at dentalpraxsales.com.au or matt at dentalpraxsales.com.au. If you want to look at our website, www.dentalpraxsales.com.au, that's us for today. Thanks very much, Matt. You can and also uh, call us on the 1300. Of course, you can call us on 1300, and uh, the details are on the website. Thanks, Matt, and we'll see you all again.